While cities across the world are shutting down to help stop the spread of coronavirus tonight, many of the best scientists in the world are busy at work. Their goal, find an existing drug that will treat coronavirus, and they are hopefully days or weeks away, not years. Our own Eva Pilgrim was granted incredible access to this research and has more on the unprecedented worldwide effort underway right now. A frantic fight underway to slow a global pandemic. We stockpile for wars, but we don't stockpile for, for infections. The effort to find a treatment for coronavirus crossing borders, creating an unprecedented international collaboration. In San Francisco, California, 900,000 people asked to shelter in place. It's a little freaky and scary. Almost everything is closed, but not this lab at the University of California, San Francisco. This is the front lines of a round-the-clock fight against a silent killer. It truly has been a race against the clock. Nevin Krogan is director at the Quantitative Biosciences Institute. He's on a critical mission trying to discover if any FDA-approved drugs can slow the coronavirus. The coronavirus can't exist by itself. It needs our cells in order to survive, and it hijacks our proteins in a way that's beneficial for um, uh, the virus. So uh, there's a lot of effort out there trying to develop drugs to target the virus, uh, which is great. We're taking a different approach. Nevin has a detailed battle plan. Essentially, we're making a map of how coronavirus um, hijacks and rewires the human cell during the course of infection. Nevin and his team aren't focusing on the virus, but its host, us. We're looking at the human cells the virus uh, needs uh, and looking at FDA-approved drugs that are available. Nevin found 29 proteins in the DNA of the virus and then followed the virus's attack to find which of our more than 20,000 proteins it interacts with. That information, critical, narrowing down for scientists where to focus. How many of these proteins have previously approved drugs that can target them, obviously for other diseases? This isn't the first map Krogan's team has created. In 2011, he mapped HIV, then Ebola, West Nile, and Den in this case, he's hoping the map helps scientists figure out a treatment for coronavirus that works now. I think it takes an average of at least six years in order to come up with a drug, but if we can already use drugs that exist for other diseases and repurpose them, uh, we may have uh, uh, drugs that we could be using uh, right now. Krogan shared the map with biochemist Kayvon Shokat, who works in a nearby San Francisco lab. Shokat has been working on discovering drugs to help cancer and Parkinson's patients. He's now working nonstop on coronavirus. Everybody else is looking at a list of 20,000 proteins. We can look at a list of 200. So to pick the 200 out of 20,000 and to focus on those, this is uh, really try and accelerate things by years. Shokat says he's found about 60 drugs, 10 which are already FDA approved that interact with the same proteins as the virus. He's still looking for more. The map and those 10 drugs have been shipped across the world to two labs that can test the live virus, the Pasteur Institute in Paris. We here have the expertise and the ability to grow the virus, quantify it, and test drugs against it and New York's Mount Sinai Hospital. Adolfo Garcia Sastre is a virologist. He recreated the Spanish flu of 1918. He's created vaccines before. His most recognizable discovery, the flu mist. But right now, he's focused on Nevin's map and if any drugs will help slow this pandemic. We'll get the results in, within one week. And then depending on what data we have, then we will move into animal models and see how it's high works. Adolfo's wife also works in a different lab. Anna Fernandez Sesma is also hard at work. You said it's all hands on deck. Absolutely, this is all hands on deck. So I actually propose it to my team. Everybody will volunteer. It's like, because we really have to prioritize right now. While Adolfo studies the effect in animals, Anna looks at the viral invasion in people. We gain time, basically, by not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're really trying to 
kind of utilize what we already have and what we already know. These scientists, just part of the hundreds in labs around the world working together in this new normal of social distancing, communicating using a shared folder for information, video teleconferencing daily via Zoom to share findings, everyone filled with a sense of urgency. It's basically 24 hours a day of, you know, uh, data flying back and forth. You go to sleep, you wake up, there's 10 new emails and the lists have changed. This roadmap, while confusing to the untrained eye, offers these brilliant minds some direction on how to get to a treatment and surprising them, giving them information about how the virus attacks that scientists didn't expect to find. Some of the proteins in the list, they don't make sense. You know, like, why would this protein why would the virus use this protein? We, we think that protein is involved in something that we've never thought viruses use, but a lot of our human proteins, they moonlight. They'd have the function we know about, but then they also do something else. Maybe the virus co-opted that. The search for so many other important scientific answers put on hold as these scientists work to find an answer to curb this pandemic. Urgency is making us realize we need to collaborate, and I truly believe it's the collaborations we've put in place that are ma really making this move at a, a speed that hasn't existed before. And uh, I also want to say, I, I think we're changing the paradigm of how to do science. It's the, the chance to have an impact on something that is a worldwide public health crisis. Krogan hopes to have the roadmap posted online by the end of the week for all scientists to see and use. His hope this unprecedented team effort will flatten the curve. Hopefully the scientific community will be able to uh, look at our map, look at our predictions, maybe make new predictions about what therapies or which drugs could be used to uh, fight this virus in the short term. I would say that there's a, you know, probably a 2% chance that we could identify a drug that is FDA approved and maybe uh, it would be well enough understood that it could be used in patients in, you know, a month. That would be the fastest of the fastest. That would be almost a miracle. Science's brightest minds teaming up on this moonshot with real potential to save so many lives. We are certainly cheering on the scientific community. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.